Let me just carry you guys. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, I'm Sudan Mudan, and don't forget the three names. Dang it. Like I should. My name is Kara Eubanks and I'm a co-host for Uplifting News. Hi, I'm Sudan Eubanks and I'm a co-host for Uplifting News. And we have a really special guest with us this Friday, Olode Akinle. And I have to say that I've um, known the Akinle family, we all have actually because of um, God's Youth Global Day Seminary and University. However, I learned what Olode was, make, was doing, Olode was doing, excuse me, this past um this past season with the pandemic and you know there are so many ways in which we're able to give back and i really want Oloday to share how he has been giving back through his church and ministry all right so a little bit about this impressive young man Oloday akinle is a washington dc native and an honored alumnus of the prominent woodrow wilson high school where he was involved in the academic athletics achievement program Oloday akinle attended the University of the District of Columbia Community College, where he received his associate degree in legal assistance and became more exposed to campus programs, associations, and committees on the flagship campus. Olude is a senior student entrepreneur who co-founded Three Kings LLC, a business that represents acknowledging the legality and kingliness, queenliness, embedded deeply within an individual while pursuing his bachelor's degree in political science at the University of District of Columbia flagship campus. Olude is currently a mentor for the Verizon Innovative Learning Program and the second Mr. or King of the illustrious University of the District of Columbia. After graduation, Olude aims to enroll in Howard Law School to become an attorney where he will pursue his Juris Doctorate in corporate law with a minor in arbitration. Um, so, I, I mean, we have quite a bit in common all the day. I'm also going to be going to law school for arbitration. But what I really want to talk with you today is just about the work that your ministry has been doing. I mean, we, we were able to talk about um, just the boxes, the, the shiploads of boxes that you've been able to um, give to the community in Maryland at this time. And would love for you to expound upon that. So the first question we have for you is, how are you uplifting others at this time? Well, uplifting others at this time, I can honestly say it's a very um, important and impactful thing to do, right? Um, granted that our current situation, we're dealing with COVID, um, a whole lot is going on, a lot of people, we're losing loved ones, just different things going on on top of our personal issues. But I can honestly say that some of the best ways that I'm uplifting people is by say just staying positive, trying to extend a vote of extend a vote of hand or help to people, trying to be as helpful as possible. Um, just uh, to piggyback on the shipments and things that we've been doing so far during COVID, a lot of the a lot of the delivery portion of it started because you know we we have a we have a large shipment of produce. We have a large shipment of things that you know we don't want to go bad, but on the on the same on the same hand, we we also do want to be very helpful to people. We understand there's a lot of families being displaced nowadays, and you know people just going through different things. Families can't eat. I mean, we see it on the news every day. A lot, a lot of people taking it to heart, and it's just extremely difficult to make ends meet. So we just I try to stand. I try to you know just keep that type of upliftment, try to stay positive, try to stay, um, I'm gonna say motivated, looking, always looking for the better, the better end of the state, looking for the better hope for everyone else. Um, hold, hold on, Carl, I'm having, a, I'm having a very hard time hearing you. It's like this. Oh, okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, wonderful, and um, thank you, Sudan. I, I know that um, you were talking just now about, I feel as though you were really alluding to what your church has been doing, but you're so humble. So the International House of Prayer for All People has created a project that is called the International House of Prayer for All People Food Bank, um, COVID-19 food relief boxes. And you shared with me that at least a thousand boxes 
are sent in per shipment. And so I wanted to know, you know, when did this all begin? Um, when did you start receiving these shipments? That's amazing. So we started receiving this shipment, I would say back in mid-June, say mid-June around that time. Um, it started off as, you know, us just receiving mass shipments of different produce like zucchini, squash, cabbage, cucumber, just various different ones. We just started off receiving it in lump sum like that. It started off as boxes. And when we first got the shipment, we were just thinking amongst ourselves, like, how can, you know, how can we distribute this? What's the best and most effective way for us to get these, you know, get these boxes to people? Because at the time, we didn't have attraction. We didn't, we didn't really have as much acknowledgement. A lot of people didn't really know about us at that time. But lo and behold, we started to, we, we had to, or better, we were forced to think outside the box because our traditional methods just wasn't working out. So we started from there as we progressed up and I'll say hmm, up until now. Up and up until now we've we've done a whole lot. We've done a whole lot. Mm, it's amazing. Oh, do you have a question, sir? Oh, this is for me. Sorry. Hello, sweetie. Um, so how do you keep yourself uplifted at this time? The best way, honestly, is this prayer. I, I, pray, I pray a lot. Um, a lot of people may, a lot of people may call it crazy, but prayer does help a great deal. Prayer does help a great deal. A lot of, uh, I'd say, more so because there's going to be some situations where you find out that even when you try to express to people what's going on in your life, they may not understand. They may not get you. So at that time, at times like that, what do you do? You can't just break down. You can't turn your back on the world. You gotta, you have to, you have to turn to someone you have to like, you have someone to talk to. And I feel like um, God or prayer has always been there for me. Um, that's something that's been deeply embedded in me. And that's something I've been you know, brought up on and I've held tight up until now. And I've seen that no matter what's changed in my life, that, that's always been a constant and I've always still been able to move forward. So I say prayer, but also think I'm positive as well because a positive mentality, there's nothing like having a positive mentality. Everybody knows that positive means every, especially with everything that's going on. It's easy to think negative. The world would, the world will automatically give you the negativity. But the best thing you can do for yourself and for the betterment of everyone else around you is to just think positively. I could not do more. I mean, when we created Uplifting News back in March, we had no idea that the pandemic would be going on this long. But you know, you got to stay uplifted. Um, you've got to stay positive and. One way to do that is um, absolutely through prayer and meditation. I completely agree. And I wanted to know from you, seeing that you play a key role within the International House of Prayer for All People, what are some of the initiatives that the church is doing right now outside of the, um, the food bank? What are some of the events or programming? What's being done um, at this time? So right now, we're not currently expanding like that we're not really doing too many initiatives outside um only because this food bank one that we that we started doing we started to re receive a whole lot of traction from it and we're still trying to like you know manage properly manage how how we're gonna you know be doing shipments or how we're gonna be you know how we're gonna be expanding and moving forward um as we're I, I would say that right now we're in a more we're more we're in more of a rebuilding phase, rebuilding phase in the sense of building up our food our food bank and all and everything because we've just we, we just restarted doing it so it's just a matter of like building it back up but as of right now I know we've been receiving a whole lot of different foods from Martha's table we've receiving different foods from them we've receiving different shipments from Capital Food Bank. I know I've been expanding personally, um, just like personal outreach, just to different areas, just to see how we can, you know, get the foods that we have to other to other industries or other institutions like different. I said DHS, DHS home shelter, mm. different, different shelters in the um, district. So it's different areas, northeast, southeast. That's wonderful. That is so wonderful. And when you were talking about traction, that was going to be my next question. 
um, you know, what, what did you mean by traction? So you're saying that you're getting um, loads of shipments from other organizations as well to be able to supply during this time? In a sense. So we've, um, we've been working with a guy who's been volunteering a whole lot of his time religiously. We've been receiving a whole lot of new volunteers and a whole lot of recognition. So people have been actually willing to come and extend their free time to us to help help us with the um, shipments and move things forward. But and while doing that, people have also been benefits or blessings on their own by bringing what they could to the table. Like we have a guy who's been working with different different elementary schools where they get out of he gets elementary school lunches and different foods that's already pre-packed and he gets it and he brings it to us and from there we just kind of give it to like the homeless or anybody else who's in need or who who's looking for any type any form of food and we know that it's been several people now who've come who said that they don't they don't have a stove they don't have a means of cooking some of the produce that we do have but you know, could they have something instant? You know, if you don't have pop top cans and, you, and there's no can opener, you, you can't open up any cans. So that's just, that's just what that is. So God's so good, we had those instant meals on hand and we were able to like supply them and they were very grateful and happy at the moment. So I know we've been receiving a whole lot of traction on that, on that front. And from some of the people that, some of the people that have come to receive boxes, they said that they heard us on different on uh, two different radio stations in DC so far. So we've been receiving a whole lot of you know a whole lot of recognition on that front. So. Yeah. And what are some challenges that you faced during this time, and how have you overcome them, or how are you currently overcoming? Um, some challenges that I faced at this time. <laughs> I could say the challenges I can honestly say is just staying consistent because consistency is a key for this thing. Staying consistent at times. It's going to be some times that, you know, you fall off or you may feel like, oh, you know, I was a shipment today. Or you, you just may not, you may not know that, like what, what's going on because everything that you're dealing with is just getting to you. But like the only way you stay on track is trusting in the people or confiding in the people that surround you that that you know has been working with you all this time like you know you have to even if you're having your off days you have to talk to your loved ones you have to stay fresh stay fresh in your mind stay fresh in your soul talk to your loved ones talk to anybody who can who you know can give you an unbiased opinion about things that's going on in your life but also like you know give you enough inspiration to like lift you up out of your situation you don't you don't want somebody that's just going to like beat you down and leave you down there you want somebody that's going to like tell you how it is but also like lift you out of it so you give you means of like i see where you're going but it's means to work around your situation so those are the type of things that you know once you're exp once you're exposed to your your hardship you do you do sit back and you reflect on your actions that you've made or you or how how the this how the decision just played out and you start to truly like respect like you still, you start to truly respect the lesson that you learn from it. Mm. So that's truly whole substance. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when those times come, when you experience these challenges, you're right. You've got to stay consistent, whether it's the best day possible or you're dealing with a bit of obstacles. So I get that. Um, speaking of consistency, you know, when it when it comes to consistency, consistency is key to leaving a legacy. So my question to you is, what do you envision your legacy to be? as well as your organizations during this time too. So I would say I would consider my legacy to be I would like I would like my legacy to be to leave behind like a fund, a trust fund or some type of organization that takes cares of that takes care of displaced families. Mm -hmm. Um more so in the sense that I've seen a whole lot since I've been doing this food delivery and food drops just food shipments and i've just seen people in different types of situations people who who has been some something before COVID, and where they are now they're like close to nothing now and they like they're like relying on food boxes and like their families don't have certain things and you know the government's not really helping out the way they should re they should really be helping out so it's like you see those type of things it's like how can you it's, it's at that point when 
the type of heart or the type of person I am, I just immediately had to had the thought to that maybe I still leave something behind to support those these type of people when they encounter situations like this because you know it can be very hard to dig a family out of, out of a situation like this. It's gonna be like it's extremely difficult. And I get everybody struggling right now, but when you sit back, you analyze this world, you see the type of world we're truly living in, you stop to realize that there is enough money for everybody to to be okay and everybody to truly be look, looked out for. If we're, Honestly, there's no reason for no family to ever go hungry. I mean, what do you think about it? There's no there's no reason for it. It's, it's not like we don't have the food. We have the, we have the food. We have everything. We have, we have the know-how, so why not apply it? So I just feel like, you know, in a sense, that's where I, I feel like my thoughts came from. Having even a legacy behind saying, you know, service, displaced families, homeless, people just that that need it because you never know the situation. You never know. And there's nothing, there's nothing like seeming, there's nothing like seeing, seeming like your whole life is falling mm-hmm. apart and it's like the end of you. Because you you especially if, if, you, if you've ever been an individual that's been in that situation, you know how it feels to feel like your whole world is coming down on you. It's like nobody really cares like that until like, you know, you see that's people that are like, wait, you know, don't don't give up hope yet. Don't give up hope unless you know there's like really all that's lost, but never stop believing. And I feel like we living in a life, we're living in a reality, we're living in a, in a whole a whole presence of all of that that's going on. Don't stop believing because you never know what could be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely so inspiring. I know Sudan was just about to ask you a question, but I wanted to say like you are incredibly inspiring that you and your family are doing and just being able to see that need and feel it. Like, I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. So we're located in South Florida and we know that um majority of our viewers are based in South Florida. I know that they would want to help out and give back to your um, project and organization. So how can residents of South Florida and community leaders support you in this So um honestly they can honestly I, could, I would say that this is probably the one the question the one question I probably had the most difficult time answering. But it's only because you know, we don't really ask for much. So it's just like we're not we're not used to just asking. Actually we're most on the giving sense, but I guess if if there's any form of support that I guess we can ask for, it will be just more, you know, more traction, more promotion of us. Uh you know, like our address is 1915 Rhode Island Avenue, Northeast, Washington, D.C. If you know anybody in the area, any other organizations in the area who will be willing to participate or partner with to like be able to expand the COVID boxes, you can direct them towards us and we'll be happy to, you know, do some form of an outreach because we understand that it's a, it's a lot going on. Um, of course, it's not for profit or anything. This is all nonprofit, so everything we can't, we can't afford a profit from any of this, but you know, it will it will be something that we definitely aspire to want to expand on because we know when we we see that it's a situation. This is this is an outlet that can service an issue that can also help to service a bigger problem in our in our communities because you never know things expand and they build up a lot over here. So that's hopefully answered the question. You definitely did know. So you gave us the address email, phone number, you know, point of contact, who can we reach? Would we reach out to you? If we can oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. For the, uh, yeah. Point of contact, you can, re- yeah, you can reach out to me. I mean, you know, be a POC for that. Or, I mean, I can give you another, I can give you an alternative point of contact as well. I mean, yeah, you know. Oh, no, no. We, well, we're interviewing you, so you can be the point of contact. If you can give us your email address and phone number, that would best be able to reach you. Oh, yes, of course. So, my personal email is olude. It's my first name dot my last name at gmail.com is olude o l u d e dot akile a k i n l e y e at gmail.com and my phone number is 202-213-4046 so much for sharing that and i have to say that you uh like i said before you've definitely inspired us and 
I'll be talking with you offline in terms of ways in which we can be able to further promote what you're doing because you know these are the work that you're doing you're on the front lines you know we talk about a lot of the people who are on the front lines where whether they are nurses or doctors um, they mm -hmm. are people making your food um, people who are you know the, at the grocery stores at the stores we're helping us during this time we also have to definitely give credit where credit is due and you're on the front lines and it just it, it makes me feel a little emotional just because i know how caring of a person you are and I, I really, truly appreciate all that you're doing and all that your family is doing. You guys are incredible to you. So, and for the both of us, I, I, and I can speak for myself. I don't know, what, what do you think, Sue? Of course, thank you so much. Um, we really respect community leaders. I respect people that really just dedicate their time to giving back to somebody else. Um, so I really appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. Coming on, and if there's anything else that you'd like to share with us, um, you know, feel free. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we close? I said everything I needed to say. Yeah, I think I know. Yeah, I think I covered everything. Yeah, I think I covered everything for now. I just did a great job. All right. Well, I will say that, you know, it's always a pleasure being able to co host you know, once again. My name is Kyra Yugos. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. I'm Sudan Yugos. And this is everything news. Bye. Bye. Thank right. you, ladies. You have a blessed one. And I really had.